This is a Canadian's prospect video, but as such, it does relate to the Habs. Therefore, I feel like it is appropriate to talk about Guy Lafleur at the start of this entire commentary here, first and foremost, because we had the unfortunate news that at 70 years old, Guy Lafleur has indeed passed away. This is from a few hours ago. Now, obviously, Guy Lafleur, NHL legend, absolute phenom of a hockey player, one of the best to ever do it. My condolences are with his family, loved ones, and next of kin, and I think a lot of people in the NHL community have been, over the years, very much impacted by Lafleur and what he was able to do on and off the ice. Sure, people like me, I wasn't born when Guy Lafleur was doing his thing. I was born, actually, well after he retired, so... Timelines don't really match up, but you can still understand the impact that good NHL players have had, and good people have had too. There are a lot of really good tributes going on right now, so go ahead and check out some of that on social media, but either way, let's go over onto our main topic here of the video as we talk about the future. From Lafleur of the past to the future of the Canadians, let's talk about some prospects here. Because when it comes to the Ontario Hockey League, the league just done their OHL coaches poll for the 2021-2022 season, and a few Montreal Canadiens were actually on the list of what the NHL, or excuse me, not the NHL, the OHL coaches thought were the best players in the league. Now, a big shout out goes over to Costa Ronzokos, who posted a tweet talking about all three of these Canadians prospects and what it was that they got awarded for. And so what I thought we'd be able to do in this video is highlight each of these three guys because when it comes to their status within the Montreal Canadiens prospect pyramid and tiers, they're not really the most high up there guys, which is not really their fault, it's just kind of how it is. So let's go over the three names that brought themselves up on the OHL's coaching poll right here, starting off with Lick Mishak's cousin, Jan Mishak. Now, Jan Mishak was awarded the second best title on face-offs in the East. If you want to go over Mishak in the season he had, he was 19 years old, 6 feet, 181, as a left-handed center left-wing player. He has already signed his entry-level deal with the Canadians that expires in 2024. Jan Mishak was a guy that was a pretty good Canadians pickup where they got him in the 2020 draft. He was taken 48th overall in the second round, and he was a guy that, in my opinion, I thought was a pretty good steal at the time, because I was a pretty big believer in Mishak and what he was able to do in lower levels levels of play. You can see that he was supposed to be, according to consensus on the draft boards, probably a later first-round pick somewhere in the 20th spot, if not maybe a bit later, maybe a bit earlier, because he had future considerations about him at 16th overall, so the Canadians getting him at 48 seemed like great value to me at the time. This season, though, with the Hamilton Bulldogs, his very first, or excuse me, his second OHL campaign, he posted up 64 points in 61 games, 34 goals, 30 assists. Now, that's a good number, but at the same time, you have to remember that Mishak was indeed 19 for the majority of the season. Also, he did play in the AHL for an extended amount of time last year, as well as Verva Litmanov in the regular Czechia League. So, this is a guy that was supposed to come over here after playing levels at pro hockey and going down to the OHL just to find his groove once again. Because you can see the numbers right here. His seasons in the AHL and the full-time Czechia League were not fantastic. He actually had a better draft year in the Czechia League compared to what he did after he got selected by Montreal. So, his season in the Hamilton Bulldogs system this year was more just, okay, go back and really just try to find that game again, because the success in the AHL wasn't really there, so now go back to Hamilton, do your thing. He had 64 points, 61 games, of course that's good, but for a 20-year-old, or excuse me, a turning 20-year-old, you could say there's a little bit more to be desired for next season, but we will get there when we get there. He was voted the second best face-off guy in the East, so good on him to see the face-off draw abilities are doing him well. Going over on to the other players, though, on the OHL's coach poll, who actually had nominations as well, you have Arbor Jakai. Now, this is one of the better Canadians players that was actually taken as a free agent. He's 21 years old right now, 6'4", 225. I think a lot of people do remember that for 
the Montreal Canadiens this season in the preseason, Shakai was a pretty good player. Like, one of these underrated, just all situations, knows what to do kind of guy. He's 6'4", 225, and he actually looked extremely impressive for a first-time pro suiting up in the preseason. But this year, in the OHL, he moved back over to the Kitchener Ranger system, had 17 points in 18 games before he got traded over to the Bulldogs, who were a pretty good team. So his production ended up tanking a little bit, 17 points in 33 games in the Hamilton system. So if you take a look at the overall production, he had himself a whopping 34 points in, what is that, 51 games played? Not bad for a defenseman who had 17 points in 51 games two years ago. But Arbor Shakai was named the best body checker in the East, which is not too much of a surprise, because as we noted, he's a big guy, he's a very physical guy, and he's a good defensively-minded guy as well. He was voted the second best defensive defenseman in the East as well, so good on him to see those nominees get underway. But for Arbor Shakai, he's honestly one of the more underrated players that Canadians have in their system, and I think long-term, if you really wanted to say out of these guys that we're talking about in this video, okay, you had to pick one to be an NHL player in the future, Arbor Shakai, I think, has a low-key chance at becoming that guy. It's rare you see players who are as competent and as fluid as Shakai is at such a young age doing defensive tasks the way that he does. Now, again, he was just a free agent pickup. This is not a guy that the Canadians spent a whole bunch of time scouting and developing and drafting into their system a few years ago, but still, there's value to be had here in players like Shakai being signed and doing what it was that they were doing, especially after showing off so well in the preseason earlier this year. Meanwhile, you go over onto the last player that was included here on the OHL's coaching poll for the Canadians and their prospects. Joe Verbetic was named the third best shootout goaltender in the East. Now, unfortunately, I can't actually isolate the shootout statistics versus the regular statistics, but Joe Verbetic is a 19-year-old 6'6", 187 left-handed catching goaltender drafted by the Montreal Canadiens in the 214th spot in the most recent draft. He was a 2021 guy who was one of the older goaltenders taken in the entire draft, older players actually, because he was born in October of 2002. But this season, playing for the North Bay Battalion, you could say that Verbetic didn't really have the best season statistically. He had a 906 save percentage and a 287 goals against average in 45 games played. I get it. You know, it's the OHL. There's a lot of goals being scored everywhere. But the North Bay Battalion also, if you take a look at where they were in the standings, they were the best team in this central division. And Verbetic was the guy that had the majority of the wins there. He went 29, 10, and 6. It's just a 906 save percentage. is not really the flat number that you would prefer to see for a goaltending prospect who is 19 years old. But if you go over to the battalion and their overall production, I mean, they were one of the best teams in the league when it comes to goals against. So that just kind of gives you a frame of reference as to how the OHL does what it does. A 906 save percentage and a 287 goals against may not be top tier in the NHL, but for the OHL and what it is that this team and league does, it's probably okay. I didn't notice this as well, but Elite Prospects now has game logs, and you can see that in Verbetic's recent five games played, he actually has had a pretty good success record over here. 971 save percentage against Mississauga, 919 against Barry, 923 against Mississauga, 970 against Oshawa, so a lot better towards the end of the year for sure. But you go over to the playoffs and you see that Verbetic played one game, he had a one goals against, and he had a 963 save percentage, also he won the game, so good for him. But Verbetic is pretty much just a seventh round guy that the Canadians have developing in their system. Obviously, you don't really expect too many seventh round players to become NHL caliber talents, but just seeing the fact that they are doing well enough to get voted on, like Verbetic is here as the second best shootout goaltender in the East, is a positive sign. Now, you know, you could say the same thing about the rest of the status of all these guys. Second round picks are not guaranteed to become NHLers, although you probably should assume that they could be because, you know, second round picks, right? Plus the fact that Mishak was supposed to be a first round guy adds to him and his development's profile 
But with other players like Arbor Shakai being a free agent pickup and Verbetic being a seventh round pick, of course, there's no guarantees that NHL stardom is in their futures, but it would be nice to see if you want to go down that path of optimism. So let me know in the comments all your thoughts about these prospects, their entire profiles over here, and what they have done in the OHL for 2021-2022. It is the year that the OHL has returned, so a lot of these guys who played zero games and zero whatever last year have finally gotten that extra year under their belt. There are a whole bunch of players that benefited tremendously from the OHL in its absence. Obviously, the guys at the top of the scoring list for 21-22 are probably the ones that have the most to gain, but for these players, what do you think? Verbetic, it is Mishak, it is Jakai. Let me know in the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this British Raj Trolls 99. Also, RIP to Guy Lafleur because, man, what an absolute legend he was. And... Bye.